we're gonna be talking about potential pond plants. Oh, you wanna eat, you're hungry. Well, hello, hello, hello. Look whose water is very, very clear, my children. You guys have been asking me a lot about what's going on with my baby crawfish, so let's go ahead and check it out. Well, hello, hello, hello. Look whose water is very, very clear, my children. Suck on my finger. What up Slayers, we're back at it with another adventure and today we're gonna go ahead and be talking about potential plans as well as doing an update on our beautiful baby blue lobster crawfish. Now, before getting into it, I wanted to go ahead and shout out the winner of finding the hidden sticker challenge. Congratulations to Jordan Edwards. You went ahead and answered all the questions correctly and got your shout out. Stay tuned for the rest of the video. You're definitely gonna go ahead and watch those blue lobsters grow up. Guys, if you wanna go ahead and be considered for a shout out in the next video, make sure to go ahead and answer all the questions correctly and be on the lookout for that hidden sticker. So with that being said, let's get right into it. We're gonna go ahead and actually feed our goldfish. All right, Slayer, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of food right here. Look at them as they beeline right to me. Hello, my babies. I know you were stuck in that evil green water and we couldn't see you. There you go. Eat up. Eat up. Oh, I love them. If this wasn't going, you'd hear them suck up a whole bunch of food right now. It's, it's absolutely amazing. My little goldfish army. I love you guys. So, to begin, we're going to be talking about potential pond plants. Come next. Come, are you excited, Papa? Are you okay? Wow. So, guys, today what we're going to go ahead and do is talk about our pond plant. So, to begin, we're going to be talking about this beautiful, amazing space. Now, this is a lot of room. Behind me, where I can go ahead and legally connect everything I need to make a massive pond. Now, it's really windy, so I apologize and everything like that, but I have a lot of space here and I'm thinking about an 18 foot pond. Yes, an 18 foot pond, 18 by 9 by 52. Now, not 52 feet high, 52 inches high. Very, very similar or identical to Catch Em All Fishing's massive pool pond. That's most likely what we're going to do. But first I need to go ahead and get all the permits and everything I need from my HOA. And I gotta go ahead and put big old hedges around and cover it around, run it through my neighbors and everything to make sure we're A-OK. -okay. Cause it's time for us to get monsters. Like I love my tank upstairs and I love tanks, but who doesn't like some giant fish? So guys, moving on, what we're gonna go ahead and do is talk about this area here. Now, the area over there that I was showing you earlier, it's gonna be for massive fish, big pond plants, with all the fish that I have around the entire state of Florida with my friends, I'll be bringing those home, putting them in the giant pond. What I'm going to be doing here though, is this is probably going to be pond number one. Right here, as you can see, I have plenty of room. And if I'm right, from what I measured before, this is about 13 feet long, okay? 13 feet long. And if I can get it to about six feet wide, that is a perfect square pool pond that we can go ahead and move the fish that we have inside after they get big enough and move them in and start bringing some of the fish that are around the same size so they can grow up together and then we put them in a massive pond. So that's it guys, right there. We're still gonna go ahead and have the goldfish pond, which is right here. We're still gonna have everything that's around, possibly upgrade it, make it nicer and everything. But definitely right here, as you can see guys, is the perfect place for pond numero uno. And then numero dos is gonna be over there. So it's gonna be perfect. Big pond here, absolute giant pond over there. Cause 13, 18, it's just, it's gonna be so much. Now, if you look on this side here, we have a lot of room and that is a lot of playing room for tons of more ponds, but you're gonna have to subscribe for all that type of stuff. But with that being said, you guys have been asking me a lot about what's going on with my baby crawfish. So let's go ahead and check it out. So making our way inside guys, I have this massive 150 gallon tank that's here. So what we're gonna do is like I said, set this puppy up for our fish that we have upstairs in the 90 and upgrade their tank from 90 to 150 right here. And they're gonna be growing up here and then putting them in the pond outside when I get the pond. So that is what's going on with that tank. And someone special is gonna be over here. So it's, there's a lot of mess cause I have, I'm moving a lot of stuff around between houses and stuff. But what's going on is we're gonna put someone here over here. I'm not too sure. And now we can really go ahead and check out the baby crawfish. All right, Slayers. So here we are, our crawfish baby update. And tank's a little dirty. <laughs> this is just some film. If I will go ahead and wipe it down, you can clearly see them. But these guys have grown so much. Look at that. Big old blue baby crawfish right now. Massive. So I've been donating a lot of them to my friends around here, to family and everything like that. 
but they're all doing pretty good. Hey, why are you getting so aggressive with me, bro? Look at him. Oh, hey, baby. Oh, what you gonna do? Attack us? You attack the Slayers? Ah, <laughs> look at them. They're very personal as well. So, so a lot of you guys have been asking me the following, okay? And that is how to take care, how to breed your crawfish, which I'll show you soon because we're gonna go ahead and be breeding our other colorful crawfish. But in the meantime, I wanna go ahead and instruct you guys on how to raise your baby crawfish appropriately. Before I get into this humbo jumbo of talking about it, look at Papa Smurf. This guy was rescued from being eaten by a lot of foreigners in a crazy place, crazy international place. But yeah, this guy looks good. Now we're still down a claw, but that will regrow eventually. And, but he's so blue. He's so blue. He's still really young though. So uh, I dare to say he's probably about a year max, but uh, we have some other crawfish here. It's another tank. Another tank. Now I have these guys fed very well. Like look how big these guys are back here. There's some big ones. So what happens with these crawfish is you need to be very attentive with your crawfish because you actually need a lot of space if you're gonna house many crawfish. So what I did was I didn't want them all to die by fighting with each other. So I separated them. I moved a lot and I kept a lot. Like there's like 10 in here and there's probably about 10 in here. And if I move this, oh, there's a monster in there, guys. A monster all the way deep in there. Oh, come out. He's so blue. Come out. Oh, he's hiding, but there's big ones. And I think there's a couple over here. You can see them on that side. So we have a lot. They hide in the trees. You want to make sure that they have a place to hide so they feel safe when they molt because they're very, very soft. So that makes them very susceptible to getting attacked by other crawfish and getting eaten alive. And you don't want that for your crawfish. Also another fun fact, you don't want to go ahead and remove the molt because they eat the molt to get stronger. So that's a whole bunch of like fun facts about crawfish. You guys have really been asking me on how to take care of these guys. And I feed them bug bites. These are the Fluval Shrimp Formula Bug Bites. I feed them that. I feed them some shrimp pellets. You guys know I, I really love the shrimp pellets, the Mazawar Delights. God, the humidity in here is crazy. I have so many tanks around my house and I guess my parents decided to go ahead and turn off the freaking air. Whew, it's hot. But with that being said, guys, that's pretty much what's going on over here. We're gonna be growing these crawfish right here. This guy's potentially gonna breed with Crayola when we get her back from, uh, from Lily. And we're gonna be breeding these guys too. We're gonna go ahead and possibly try to find a female to go ahead and raise up and potentially breed with Papa Smurf. So I have two females breeding from different classes and stuff, a whole bunch of stuff, I'm gonna have some fun. But these guys are actually gonna be great food in the future for my fish. Now, I want them to get big so that I can start having them breed by themselves as well. So we're probably going to be doing a video soon where we get all the brown crawfish, the original crawfish from my outdoor pond, move those somewhere, then move all the blue ones over there. So we're going to be redoing it. There's so many things going on, guys. So this is a video that I'm not really used to doing, that I'm talking more than showing a lot of stuff. And I know this is dirty, guys, but I, I clean it often and... It's a lot to deal with when you're going ahead and throwing in a lot of pellets two to three times a day. Like I literally, I shake this three times a day. I go ahead and I give them pellets at least once a day. So it's just a lot to maintain, but they're tank cleaners. So what happens is, believe it or not, is that it can be very dirty like so, and then it can be super crystal clear and clean like this guy. You know what? He hasn't eaten in a while. Let's go ahead and feed him. So guys, these are the shrimp pellets I'm talking about, the Omega One shrimp pellets. They're really, really, really good. If I can open them up to show you what's going on. And I usually feed them one to two of these, as you can see. So I gotta slit this thing down right here and follow it down. Come on, Papa Smurf. Look at that scent trail. And they use their antennas to go ahead and sense it. And he's trying to find it. He's trying to find it. And it's right in front of him. And there you go. That's what I'm talking about. Go ahead and eat up. Oh yeah. Good job. About time. But on a serious note, guys, so I feed him one of those shrimp pellets and the crawfish is down those. And I feed them once or twice. But as you can see, look at all the debris that comes off. They break it apart. So that gets all up in your tank. So you need to be very, very cautious about how dirty you let your water get. Because it can be high in ammonia and nitrites and stuff because of a lot of leftover food. So you got to be doing regular water changes. I change these, guys, these tanks right here about almost twice a week. It may not look like that. 
because of this, but I just change the water, add water, and, and so on and so forth. So with that being said, you know what? Let's go ahead and look at our new enclosure that we set up for the other crawfish that we have getting ready to breed. All right. So there's a beautiful white crawfish. Oh, you want to eat? You're hungry. She's so personable. It's crazy. She just molted and she looks so much bigger, guys. One of these days, I'm going to go ahead and catch them in slow motion molting. It'd be something really, really cool to see. Look at them go. There's so much flow in this tank that it's just perfect, nice and clear. And we added, we took away the pot. Lily hated the pot. And I'm like, why? But she was, she was, she had a valid reason for hating the pot. He escaped. And we don't want that to happen this time. So I set up like a little tunnel right here. We move the sand and there he is. Captain America's in there, 100%. And maybe if we look on this side, maybe, come on. You can see his tail, <laughs> but he really likes it in there. So I believe he's going through the process of molting himself. So hopefully I get that on film. So you know what? The white lobster really, really wants to eat right now. So let's feed her. All right, baby, you hungry? Let's see if you eat like Lily. That girl can knock down food. Oh yeah, look at that scent. This is exactly why I love shrimp pellets. And just like that, she'll gnaw down. Now I actually been feeding her too. And that's exactly why she's already molted. She's molted twice since we got her, guys. It's crazy. And another food I like to use is Mazivor Delights. But this is what I use for like the red tails, bichers. Sometimes I feed Ninja this. And he's not really a fan because he loves the shrimp. But he'll eat this occasionally and stuff. It's a, uh, was it? one point eight goldfish per pellet. So that's a lot of protein per pellet. So they actually have a smaller version of that and catch them all fishing and wild world of Farley use it. I haven't used it in a while, but I really do like it. So I might have to sometimes switch the diet because our boy over here has been a little cranky when it comes to these pellets. Well guys, that's all the time we have for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the bell to get notifications on the channel, as well as if you wanna go ahead and win that shout out, don't forget to go ahead and answer the following questions, correct? So first, how many stickers did I use? Second, what color Color sticker that I use and third what is the name of the crawfish we got from the supermarket if you answer all those questions correct I will shout you out in the beginning of the following video and with that being said guys I'll see you in the next adventure booyah <laughs>